Vampire Fish It's the time of the year when you and your family go on your yearly holiday, and next on the list is the Amazon rainforest. You soon find yourself peacefully floating in a tranquil river or lake, soaking up the warm sun and enjoying a river dip next to the forest. You suddenly have the urge to pee and decide why not? It's literally a river. There aren't any rules against that. You let a stream of ammonia full urine into the water and suddenly you feel a sharp searing pain as hundreds of razor sharp teeth latch onto your flesh, slicing through the skin of your urethra like a hot knife through butter. You thrash in agony only to realize that these teeth belong to a creature that your guide had warned you about. Vampire fish. These ominous-looking parasites are a species of catfish found in the Amazon basin, with their cylindrical eel-like bodies and a mouth filled with concentric rings of backwards-facing teeth, they are perfectly adapted for their feeding habits. You now have around ten of these that have swum up your urethra, and because of their backwards-facing spines, they now attach firmly onto your flesh and start having a meal on your blood. Once attached, vampire fish are incredibly difficult to remove, often requiring surgical intervention. Some species are even capable of swimming against the flow of urine, burrowing deeper into the body with each attempt at removal. Loa Loa Whenever you close your eyes, once in a while you have these eye floaters, which are usually normal bacteria floating inside the back of your eye. But one day, suddenly, you feel an intense itching and burning sensation in your eye. As you rub it, your vision starts to blur, and to your horror, you catch a glimpse of something wriggling beneath your eyelid. It's a long, slender worm slowly emerging from your eye socket, breaching the surface in a snake-like manner. It may seem like a nightmare to you, but it is a terrifying reality for many in West and Central Africa. Loa Loa is transmitted through the bites of deer flies, and once the larvae make their way into the human host, they can migrate throughout the body, taking up residence in various tissues and even crossing into the brain. But the the worm's love for the eye truly sets it apart. These parasites seem to love the eye's tissues, where they can be seen visibly moving beneath the surface, causing intense discomfort and even temporary vision loss. Now, imagine trying to go to sleep with a literal worm or worms just sliding in your eye where you could not have just one, but even five or more worms just wriggling in your eyeball or under the skin around your eye just itching to get out. Worse, attempting to remove the worm can lead to further damage or blindness if not done properly. In some cases, the worm may even break apart during removal leaving fragments behind to continue wreaking havoc on the delicate eye tissues. Australian Paralysis Tick Just like everything out of Australia that evolved to either kill you or make you have a really bad day, whenever the Australian Paralysis Tick bites you when you're out camping in the outback, you feel a slight tickle on your skin, barely noticeable at first. But soon, that tickle turns into a burning, searing pain as the paralysis tick sinks its mouth parts into your flesh, releasing a potent cocktail of neurotoxins that rapidly course through your veins. Within hours, the first signs of paralysis begin to set in. Your limbs grow heavy, your muscles weaken, and panic starts to set in as you realize that your body is slowly shutting down. As the paralysis spreads, even breathing becomes a massive struggle, with each shallow gasp feeling like attempting to inhale through a straw. The toxins from the blood-sucking parasite are now crashing your nervous system to a point where even if your body is screaming at your lungs to inhale, the muscles at the lungs just don't have the strength to do it. And all the while, the tick remains firmly attached, feeding itself on your blood, not caring whether you live or die, as soon enough, it will have a huge juice bag to feed itself. Gungylonema pulchrum If, in the unfortunate event, your food gets contaminated with the eggs of this parasite, as the contaminated liquid hits your lips, the larva seizes its opportunity, squirming its way into your mouth and burrowing into the soft tissues of your throat or esophagus. Over the next few weeks, you start to experience a persistent, nagging sensation in your throat, an itch that just can't be scratched. As the days go by, the discomfort intensifies, evolving into a searing and agonizing pain with what feels like shards of glass tearing at the delicate lining of your esophagus with every swallow. One day, as you struggle to force down even the smallest sip of water, you feel something wriggling in the back of your throat. 
a living, writhing mass fighting its way up from your esophagus. In a fit of panic, you start coughing violently and in the process expel a few worms, squirming worms onto the surface of your hand. If left alone, it could lead to the blockage of your esophagus by hundreds of these small worms as they continue to multiply within your body. Leishmania Parasite Whenever you visit tropical areas, it's pretty obvious that the climate makes them an amazing breeding ground for all types of insects. Now let's say you were to go on a well-deserved vacation on the sandy beaches of a remote tropical country. Flies aren't uncommon in most beaches, but this particular one would be hard to miss. It's usually a slender fly with gray or tan spots, and the bite is particularly painful. When these infected female sand flies bite, you stand a chance of being infected with the parasitic protozoa inside these flies that are usually passed on from mammals to humans. Now, the issue is that it doesn't cause one type of disease, but rather a whole list of various conditions depending on the type of species, which can range from uncomfortable to making you want to off your shelf. The most common form is a skin infection, which causes skin ulcers and disfiguring scars, which may not be fatal, but if acne gives people such confidence issues, this form is 1,000 times worse. These aren't just your regular pimples or rashes either. Cutaneous leishmaniasis can cause open, crater-like sores that are really painful and slow to heal. Depending on where that sandfly took a bite, it can show up on exposed areas like the face, arms, or legs. Now, the sores start off just looking like a bump or discolored skin patch, but if left untreated, they can really start oozing and crusting over. And we're talking about disfiguring scars that can stick around even after the infection clears up. Human Botfly over time, the human botfly has developed a rather disgusting way of ensuring that its young survive, and this is usually done by laying eggs on large mammals, like humans. When the eggs are planted on your skin and under it, the larva develops within a pulsating, pus-filled cavity for around six to eight weeks, breathing through a small opening at the surface. As the weeks progress, one tiny bump begins to swell and pulsate, taking on a disgusting, almost alien appearance as the larva matures. And then, one day, a small opening appears atop the swollen mass and from it emerges a fleshy worm that expels a horrible-smelling, viscous fluid that oozes from your flesh. As it matures, the larva can grow up to an inch long. While primarily found in tropical regions of Central and South America, human botfly cases have occurred in North America when people travel to endemic areas. Good insect protection and promptly removing any suspected larvae can help prevent and treat this parasitic infestation. Filarial Worms now, filarial worms have among the worst side effects known, as they can make your body parts grow to extreme sizes, making you a real-life elephant man, hence the name elephantiasis. Filarial worms, such as them, are transmitted through the bites of infected mosquitoes, with their microscopic larvae entering the human bloodstream. From there, they migrate to the lymphatic system, where they can take up residence and slowly mature into their adult forms. As the months pass, the worms continue to grow, their elongated bodies coiling and twisting within your lymphatic vessels. They cause excruciating pain and disfiguring swelling as they obstruct the flow of lymph fluid. With time, your limbs and extremities become grotesquely distorted and enlarged under the relentless onslaught of these parasitic invaders. But the torment doesn't end there. In some cases, these worms can migrate to even more sensitive areas of the body, such as the male genitalia, where they can cause a condition known as filarial hyperphysia hydrocele, a horrible affliction that results in the swelling and disfigurement of the scrotum, turning what should be a private and intimate area into a twisted, misshapen mass of flesh. And perhaps the worst part being that once these body parts have swollen to these sizes, there really isn't much one can do to reduce it. Brain-Eating Amoeba It's a normal summer's day, and you and your friends decide it would be a good idea to cool off at a pond nearby. Despite it being a stagnant body of water that could possibly be full of bacteria, you all take a swim. Four days later, one of your friends develops a severe headache that he says feels like a nail is being hammered into his skull. He soon gets very confused and starts experiencing hallucinations and a stiff neck. His parents rush him to a hospital and try to get him some help, but all the doctors have no idea what this is despite all the tests they can think of, well, until you tell them that you all went swimming in a stagnant pool of water, and they look at each other and you can see that they know what this is. Now, 
Negleria fowleri, better known as the brain-eating amoeba, is a free-living microscopic amoeba that can cause a rare but almost always lethal brain infection. As of 2023, only one person, a 14-year-old child in the UK, was reported to have survived this. Even then, she was left with extreme brain issues as the amoeba had eaten up parts of her brain. The amoeba typically lives in warm bodies of water such as lakes, rivers, and hot springs. When someone goes swimming or diving in these waters, the amoeba can enter through the nose and travel up to the brain, where it causes a severe inflammatory response that destroys brain tissue. The current mortality rate is over 97%, and even with treatment, the survival rate is still pretty low, around 3 to 5%. Guinea worm parasite. The infection usually starts when a person drinks stagnant water contaminated with guinea worm larvae. These tiny cysts then migrate through the body, maturing into adult worms over a year. The female worm, now over a meter long, forms an agonizingly painful blister on the host's skin, usually on the lower limbs. When this blister bursts and comes into contact with water, the worm begins to painfully and slowly emerge expelling thousands of larvae into the water source to continue the cycle. Now, the level of agony experienced during this process is extremely excruciating, often incapacitating the sufferer for weeks or even months at a time, as you can imagine the pain of thousands of larvae forcing their way out. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of the guinea worm is our progress in battling it. Through a global eradication effort mostly done by the Carter Center and partners, from an estimated 3.5 million cases across 21 countries in the 1980s, the guinea worm has been reduced to just a handful of cases recently, with only 13 reported in 2022. We are on the verge of making it only the second disease in human history to be eradicated after smallpox. Tania solium, pork tapeworm. This parasite is usually the biggest threat for those who have the habit of eating undercooked pork, as not cooking pork enough leaves the eggs untouched. Once inside the human digestive system, these larvae can develop into adult tapeworms, attaching themselves to the intestinal wall and growing up to several meters long. If a human ingests eggs shed by the adult tapeworm through fecal-oral transmission, the larvae can migrate and form cysts in various tissues throughout the body, including the brain, muscles, and and eyes. This condition is known as cysticercosis, where you have thousands of little eggs everywhere in your body. As you can imagine, if this occurs in the brain, it's pretty damning as the cysts will replace where brain tissue is supposed to be, making it riddled with holes in severe cases like Swiss cheese. And unfortunately, even if you manage to get rid of them, the holes that developed won't grow back. Symptoms can range from seizures and headaches to cognitive impairment and even death, depending on the number and and location of the cysts. It's a genuinely horrifying scenario where the parasite essentially turns the human body into its playground. Toxoplasmosis. This is probably a parasite you might have, and you don't even know it, as most of the time the infection barely does anything to healthy humans. The hosts are usually members of the cat family, where the parasite can undergo sexual reproduction in the intestines. Because humans have grown to love cats so much and are constantly touching them, you could have accidentally swallowed a few cysts after forgetting to wash your hands after petting a cat. If you are a healthy individual, a toxoplasma infection will usually cause mild flu-like symptoms or even remain asymptomatic. However, this simple parasite becomes very aggressive in immunocompromised individuals like people with HIV or pregnant women. Now, the symptoms do depend on which group is being affected. If it's an adult with, say, AIDS because your body isn't able to fight off the parasite properly, it will go for the brain and begin setting up colonies, taking up more and more space leading to confusion or an altered mental state. If a pregnant woman gets this in the first trimester, Trimester, the infection doesn't harm the mother but instead goes straight for the fetus, and the child gets something called congenital toxoplasmosis, which causes the head to swell up to huge sizes and leads to mental issues. But perhaps what's really interesting about this is that even when it doesn't cause symptoms, it causes people to develop an increase in risk-taking behavior, like buying fast motorcycles and compulsiveness. 